As Fire Emblem continues to work its way into becoming one of Nintendo's top IPs, and even their most successful foray into the mobile market, we've begun to receive more and more spin-off titles for the series. Most recently, with the original Fire Emblem Warriors, where we got to experience Fire Emblem elements incorporated into the classic Warriors series hack and slash gameplay. After the overwhelmingly positive fan feedback towards Fire Emblem Three Houses and its cast of characters, and with Intelligent Systems and Koei Tecmo having teamed up to develop it, supposedly with much of the work resting solely on Koei, it probably seemed only right to then step back into the world of Fodlin for yet another Warriors romp with its roster, and continue this newfound partnership between the two entities. Which brings us to Three Hopes. So, should you buy Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes? The short answer is probably, as long as you find enjoyment in the gameplay of Warriors titles, which is largely comprised of racing across battlefields and destroying hordes of enemies with devastatingly powerful special attacks. Gone here are the typical turn-based elements of the Fire Emblem games, and while many Fire Emblem mechanics have found their way into Three Hopes, including the exploration of camp, training your units, support conversations, tea times, and managing skills and equipment, the battle gameplay here is what significantly differs the most. The same character stats have also translated over, but even they can tend to do slightly different things here. Even though many aspects of this game will be familiar if you've experienced Three Houses, don't go into this expecting the exact same kinds of gameplay and strategic thinking. Persistent, yet lazy criticism of the Warriors series over the years tends to refer to these games as mindless button mashers, and while that certainly can be true for some players, and the games can be played that way, when regarding this one specifically, quite frankly, I find it pretty dismissive to think that mindless gameplay is all that this game will have to offer. There's definitely much more to it. But yes, it's still going to be a fast-paced live-action hack and slash. And if that just doesn't do it for you, then ultimately, you probably won't have a great time with it. But you know what you will have a great time with, though? Today's video sponsor, the one and only Raid Shadow Legends. Something that I've realized over the years is that I think my favorite aspect of Raid is the sheer variety of champions and their designs. There's not a lot of games out there with such a varied cast of playable characters from a bunch of different races and species, and yet they still manage to be excellently crafted with really cool appearances and designs. There's so many really awesome ones. Raid Shadow Legends just celebrated their third anniversary as one of the top mobile RPGs, and Raid's Doom Tower is one of my favorite features added to the game. This challenging game mode features a bunch of scary bosses across 120 levels for you to slay. This month is a jam-packed one for the game. They've got the Path of Light event going on where you can explore branching paths and get the rewards that you want the most, and even a special event to get a really solid new character, Deliana. All you have to do is play Raid for seven days between now and July 20th to get her. Deliana is one of the strongest support champions to ever grace the game, so don't miss her. And for new players, you can enter the promo code MYDELIANA in-game to get 50 XP brews, which will allow you to instantly max out your brand new hero to level 50 alongside receiving a ton of silver. So make sure to do that before July 20th as well. There's never been a better time to get started with Raid, and if you use my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen, new players will also be given a new player starting pack worth about $30 in value to help jumpstart your experience. This includes a free champion Tayrol, 200k silver, an energy refill, one XP boost, and also an ancient shard, so you can summon another powerful champion right out of the gate too. These rewards will be in your inbox for the next 30 days only, so please do check it out. Thank you for supporting the channel for those that do, and thanks again to Raid for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to it. Battalions, classes, weapons, durability, support bonds, combat arts, magic, and abilities, these numerous elements from the modern Fire Emblem games are present here in Three Hopes and affect combat considerably. The sheer number of these mechanics should give pause to anyone thinking the game won't have any depth to it. It's really just Fire Emblem with all the depth that that brings with a different battle system. Just button mashing, especially on the harder difficulties, is going to leave the player in a world of pain and frustration. For example, the weapon triangle has been significantly beefed up in this game. So along with the typical swords beating axes, axes beating lances, and lances beating swords, new elements are incorporated here, like brawling weapons now being effective against magic wielders, magic being effective against bows, and so on. These advantages, in particular, significantly alter the game's flow of combat, and fighting with a disadvantage or poor pre-battle planning, just like the main series, 
can turn your experience into an absolute slog. And that's your fault. If the rest of the game is anything like the first Fire Emblem Warriors, then it will also certainly present a considerable challenge on the harder difficulties. Take it from me. This is the most pathetic Let's thing. Begin. Come on. It's, time to move. it's one archer. It. One archer. I'm literally bleeding out. Like, I can't risk going in and out of this anymore. If you understand the game going in and make an effort to grasp the depth of the mechanics that are here, I think you'll find that it's much richer than it can first appear. So next question then, can you play this game without having played Fire Emblem Three Houses? The answer is yes. The story from what we know so far, at least early on, has a pretty breakneck pace to get the player up to speed and not bore those who are already familiar with this world and its characters. After just a few short introductory missions, the player is then whisked right into the main plot and the storyline time skip, where you see the characters grow up after two years. Some of the dialogue might be a bit more obtuse for you if you haven't played Three Houses and don't have a baseline knowledge of this world and its many factions, but I would say after experiencing the demo, no, you don't need to have played Three Houses to understand what's going on. Subsequent playthroughs will also continue to further clarify as you pick up on even more subtle details in the writing. If you have played Three Houses though, you'll be able to enjoy the added context to many aspects of that original story and the excitement of seeing various plot threads and elements that have been altered this time around. Even in just this short demo, we've received answers to many long-standing questions left behind by Three Houses. But whether you've played Three Houses or not, I personally believe that you'll still be able to enjoy this game nonetheless. For returning players who have, you'll be delighted to know that the early chapters of the game have already shown some pretty significant signs of alteration, and arguably improvements to those original storylines. Some of the problems that many fans had with the branching routes of Three Houses are seeming to be swiftly addressed in this new altered timeline. While we only know the very beginning of each story, and many of the characters start off in the same place and with the same motivations that they've always had, their paths this time are being taken in slightly new directions. I don't want to include any spoilers in this video, but I'll just say that Dimitri's motivations and reasoning behind his decisions are made much clearer this time around. A storyline that disappointingly took place off-screen in Edelgard's route is addressed front and center without delay, and while I do think the Golden Deer's beginning here is a bit weaker than the other two, it is fun to see Claude having even more direct involvement and interaction with Almira and its new characters. Avoiding spoilers, many of the other more fringe characters that were mentioned as a part of the Three Houses story, but never shown on screen, actually make full appearances for the first time here. There are also characters that many fans wished would have been recruitable in the original game that get to finally make their debut here as well. It's currently unclear how recruitment from the other houses will work within the game, it's not something that was revealed or even hinted at in the demo, but there are some achievements for owning the legendary relic weapons of other houses, whether that's through fighting and defeating these other characters or not, and there are other ways that the game has remained very faithful to the original, so it's certainly a big possibility. Graphically, the game still looks extremely visually similar to its predecessors, Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem Three Houses. But there are also some distinct signs of improvement. The lighting effects have been considerably upgraded. Many backgrounds during conversations that were once static images are now seemingly fully 3D, giving a much better sense of scale and depth. Comparing Three Houses scenes to Three Hopes is a pretty big difference. It feels like it's finally looking the way it was always meant to. In terms of character models, there are certainly plenty of new ones with all of the students having gotten brand new time skip designs, but you will also recognize a lot of the same older models here from Three Houses, like students pre-time skip and the teachers. However, even with some of these models having been reused, they do seem to have been given way more life to them, with new subtle animations that are present, like eyes glancing around and making eye contact with the character they're speaking to. Eyes did move in three houses, but if you compare the two, you'll see subtle movements and idle animations that are just so much more natural now in Three Hopes, which we love to see. Colors are also way better here too. Some environmental lighting effects can be a little jarring though, like walking into certain areas and having the screen tint different colors. I noticed this mostly at base camp. I wish it faded more smoothly. From the battlefields we've been able to experience so far, I've really enjoyed the variety, specifically the Imperial Capital map Enbar being one of the absolute standouts for me. Gameplay-wise, they've been pretty fun. However, I will add that there's certainly nothing to write home about in terms of their visual fidelity. The game has to strike a balance between performance and visuals, 
especially when having to display hundreds and hundreds of enemies on screen at once. So it is understandable. It could certainly be better, but there does tend to be so much going on that it's not that noticeable or important. As far as game performance goes, I've been very impressed in docked single player mode on the battlefield. In the demo, I experienced no chugging of any kind or frame dips that I was aware of. My biggest complaint in terms of performance would have to come from base camp. Sometimes it's fine, but there will be moments where you're running around from one end of camp to the other, and you find yourself slowed to a crawl. Presumably, this is the game attempting to populate the other side of the map, but because base camp, ironically, isn't that big and doesn't have that much time or fancy effects like walls to hide what it's doing, it's pretty noticeable. There is a workaround to this. You can handily teleport to whichever NPC you want to go to, so technically you don't have to run around camp much at all. But I just wanted to point this out. Performance-wise, base camp slowdowns were the worst that I encountered by far. But on the positive side of things, loading screens are incredibly brisk and fly right by, which I find very impressive and exponentially better than three houses even. Moving on, the game will not feature online functionality as far as we know, but it does feature local two-player co-op. As far as two-player goes, the graphical fidelity definitely takes a hit, much like in the first Fire Emblem Warriors. Models lose shadows, and game elements and textures are certainly less detailed. It seems to run fine for the most part with these concessions, and I didn't experience any situations where enemy soldiers were not appearing, as would happen sometimes in the first Warriors game. However, I did notice some slowdown and chugging after a while. It could have been because both my brother and I ended up on opposite sides of the map as the Switch struggled to keep up the pace. There's also no graphic or performance mode with this game where you can select between higher fidelity or more frames per second like you could in the first Warriors, at least in the demo thus far. So what you see is what you get. I played docked the entire time that I played, so I'd imagine that things will be scaled down a bit further in handheld too. So keep in mind that in two-player mode, sacrifices are made to keep up performance. The Switch just doesn't have the most powerful hardware. Moving on, this could be because of the winding hallways of some of the earlier maps, and we'll have to see if this is indeed the case for the rest of the game, but I did experience occasional issues with the camera and lock-on system. Especially with swifter characters like Petra, it can tend to haphazardly move around and not behave as well as one would hope. You can adjust the lock-on camera in the settings, so more testing will have to be done, but it can certainly be finicky at times. I found Shez to be the easiest character to play as, with a really solid and fast moveset. This does, however, make it more difficult to want to switch to other characters at times, because it's just straight up easier to play as Shez. I can see it being pretty typical for players to develop bad habits by just sticking to the main character. But truthfully, a lot of the fun of these games is with trying other builds and units, and we're quite restricted with the base classes in the demo so far, especially when compared to Shez's unique class Flugel, which is just really good, so hopefully that will change in the full release. Music-wise, the new soundtracks are definitely top-notch and nothing to scoff at, as we've come to expect from the first game. I've thoroughly enjoyed the mix of new and remixed old tracks, and some of the remixes hit really hard and sound incredible, which is great. No complaints here at all. There's even different base camp tracks for each of the three routes, so that's fun too. Some of the walking sound effects of NPCs at base camp can be pretty repetitive, a little bit like the trotting sound effects of some of the cavalier type units, and I do wish we could have the occasional variation to some of these sound effects so that they sounded a little bit more varied, but they're usually pretty easy to ignore. What's even more important though, is that the game will once again feature a large amount of excellent voice acting, bringing back from what we can tell, the entire original roster from Three Houses, as well as great new talent. There are some moments, like at base camp, where the game is not fully voiced though, which is a stark difference from Three Houses, where monastery exploration pretty much always led to voiced dialogue. But personally, I don't find this to be that big of a deal. The game is voiced where it matters, heavily on the battlefield, in support conversations, and in the story. You just won't hear characters speak when running around base camp doing tasks. Although, it is worth noting that you will hear the shopkeep NPCs speak, and like the first warriors and three houses, they can get pretty old pretty fast. You've got an eye for quality. You've got an eye for. You've got an eye for. You've got an eye for Without going too far into it, it does look as though this game will be getting DLC that you can purchase later on down the road. The specifics are a bit hazy still, of course, but data mined info has revealed some of the details, so expect future updates there. If all of that sounded appealing to you, then I think you have your answer. Personally, I think from what we've seen so far, this game has the potential to be a much better than expected follow-up, and perhaps even a correction to some of Three House's blemishes. 
Koei and Intelligent Systems might just be going out of their way to please as many fans as possible here, and I love it. In the lead-up to the game's release, speculation and hype ran rampant, with a lot of different expectations and, forgive me, hopes, for what this game would entail. Personally, I was curious as to how cheesy or how well they would develop this new story with these characters, and so far, I'm more than pleasantly surprised, especially when compared to the story of the original Fire Emblem Warriors. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, slash the thumbs up down below to help it out, share it with your friends, and get subscribed for more Fire Emblem coverage up to the launch of the game and some helpful guides to come out later. If you haven't yet, check out some of my live streams of me experiencing the demo if you want an even closer look at the game. I I think I remember my name. I think it I think it was wasn't it? Um uh, Right? Isn't that my name? Oh my god. It's Shez! Follow us on Twitter if you'd like to get the latest Three Hopes news and updates as they come out. You can also come chat with us on our Discord server if you want to talk Fire Emblem Three Hopes and other games with our community there. And a huge thank you to all of my amazing patrons that help to make content like this possible. You guys are the real MVPs. And I'll see you all next time.